every 30 minutes, someone in Chicago disappears. He is one of the good guys. We need to find Wilson. The family thinks there's foul play involved. I don't get this. Chicago police respond to every call immediately. This case just keeps getting weirder. Something's not right. Yeah, I think we'll be not played. Their chances of finding the person alive are cut in half. We definitely have a target over here. If detectives don't find them within the first 48 hours. Did your brother see a murder go down? Royal Blue. 16380. Oh, here we go. See, that's why I'm a detective. Found us. Detective Jim Corcoran traveled 4,000 miles from his native Ireland to join the Chicago Police Department. My cousins were police officers. They recommended it, and I took the test, and here I am. After about five or six years, I, uh, I went on a gang team. I'm a detective now. Woohoo! Happy days. Okay, danger, anything? No. Nothing, I mean. You're dealing with people the worst day of their lives. Sometimes they're hysterical. No. For them, it's a family crisis. It's probably the biggest crisis they've had in their lives. How are you? Can I have a quick word? There are some cases that are just gut-wrenching. Just gut-wrenching. Detective Court Green, you have a phone call on 2319. 4.30 p.m. Monday. Detective Corcoran. Okay. A distraught woman calls from the southwest side. Yes. Her son rode his bicycle to a local park two days ago and vanished. So I just received a phone call from a family member and they seem genuinely concerned. The missing man, 30-year-old Wilson Reyes, just received a graduate degree from the University of Illinois. He comes from a close-knit family of five siblings and three cousins. Hi. Hello. I spoke to you on the phone, right? Okay, can we come in? Please. He's missing since Saturday around noon. At one o'clock. Okay, Saturday. She said he was going to take a walk in the park. When she learned Wilson was missing, Araceli flew in from Arizona. He was feeling ill. He was feeling ill. Yes. And what, what, what was he complaining um, about? What, nausea, what? stomach um, concerns, and um, most flu-like symptoms. And we believe that he took the bike because the bike is missing. We also believe he took the cell phone because the cell phone is missing. It just seems quite, all of it seems quite odd. Everything that, that happened, the way it happened, and the kind of person he is, so responsible. You were talking about a traffic um, accident? Yes. It was a motorcycle accident on the same day. It says, a motorcyclist dies after crash. And you think someone was on a bicycle in the accident? Yes. The accident occurred on the same road Wilson would have taken to the park. He had just finished his Master's of Education program. From? From um, the University of Illinois at Chicago. Yes, this was his last project. See, he graduated May 5th. May 5th, yes. uh, with a Master's? With a Master's degree in Education. A master's degree in Education. And he also graduated with a Master's degree in Physics. Okay. That must have been a big day out yeah. for everyone, huh? Yeah. He wanted to become a teacher. He said that he wanted to give back to the community. He was just a, a real uh, renaissance man. Everyone's very proud of our Wilson, right? Yes. Okay. It's rarely you come across a family as concerned. Like flying in, like flying in on the red eye from Phoenix. I mean, he could be in an accident when he's bicycled. Saturday it was raining, so the conditions, uh, the road conditions wouldn't be great. I should know, I was just in a rather serious traffic accident myself, where I shattered my uh, left leg, actually lucky to come out of it alive. 14 weeks, can't even put weight on my foot. So, if he's out there on a bike in these slippery conditions, uh, bad things can happen. I, I just hope he's in some hospital right now. Only God knows where he's at. And 
and to keep praying that, that we will find him soon. He's already on the news. Corcoran expands the hunt, bringing in Detective Celis Morris. You know, there was a fatality in that accident. Maybe it was a bigger accident. More people were involved. He could be in a coma somewhere from an accident. Who knows? With no ID. I'm following up on a missing person case that I got. He's Hispanic, uh, 30 years old, male. And if you have any uh, John Doe's that are coming. John Doe, I might not even know his name. Missing since Saturday, two days ago. Would he have his ID on him? No, he didn't. That's the thing. He did not have his ID on him. We're trying to see if he may be at your hospital or has been there. No, everybody's accounted for. Everybody's accounted for in Jackson Park tonight. Okay, well, thank you so much. Emergency room, how can I help you? I'll wait for something. I'm looking for a missing person. No John Doe's either, right? Yeah, the birthday was 05. Thank you for your time. Oh, yes. I had a family call earlier. Okay. Yeah. I don't see anybody. No. No, we weren't able to find them in the system at all. Okay. Negatives. They're all negatives, yeah. Um, nothing at the hospital or morgue. It doesn't look like Wilson was in an accident. Okay, back to plan B now. What is plan B? He was squeezing my hands hard. He was with tears in his eyes. Okay. Morris and Detective Nanette Ainsley get a new lead. A friend of Wilson saw him in McKinley Park just before he vanished. We don't have a lot of time. I want to get over there and do this as quickly as we can, okay? Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we have a seat. All right, so how long have you known this guy? A little over a year. Where did you meet him? In the park. Okay. Some odd about his family that was weird. What? He felt that his family wanted to put him through something that he didn't want to go through. So in order for him to go through it, he had to do exactly what they said. That's what he was trying to tell me. He said, you don't know. I, I did all this for what? They want me to do what they want, but they won't let me do what I want. Did he say where he was going? No, he just said, I'll see you when I see you again. So I watched him as he walked away, because I'm wondering in my mind, why is my boo crying? Why is my dog crying? This is not like my dog. Morris asks for a description of Wilson's clothes. I closed my mind and I went back to where I was at, at that point, and I remembered. This is a shirt. So, okay, beautiful. So this is the front of the shirt? It was pink, lime, and orange. It had four people on there. Me, you, them, us. I don't know what that me, them, you, us meant. Me, you, them, us. Yeah, me, you, them, uh -huh. us. All right, well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, okay? I mean, she was definitely original. There's a lot of different people in Chicago. I'm used to that. story sends Detective Corcoran back to Wilson's home. I just feel maybe someone's holding something back. I don't know, maybe their family's a little embarrassed about this, but um, I'm just hoping to get a little bit more out of them. Oh, there's my little doggy. 
Hi, Cody. Hey, Jim Corcoran. How are you? Just going to take your information. Wilson's older brother has flown in from Las Vegas to help find him. He fears Wilson may be a victim of his past. We came from Michigan. We started high school here. But we came with this different mentality. Mm -hmm. A little naive. Sure. Somebody pushed us, we were, were upset, you know? And, and we didn't know that here, you don't get upset, you just take it and you stay quiet because there's a group of people that are part of the gang and they'll, they'll, they'll beat you up, you know? When the brothers were teenagers, the family moved to Humboldt Park, a mostly Puerto Rican neighborhood. The Mexicans that were there, they were part of the, the dragons. Latin dragons? Latin dragons. Okay. In the 90s, the dragons battled other Hispanic gangs for turf. They're now one of the most feared gangs on Chicago's southeast side. They help us because we're Mexican, you know? Right. And then after then, they, they became our friends and everything, and... The dragons? Yes, uh -huh, the dragons. So he was part of them, kind of. Was he initiated? Well, over there, they just... You're there, you're part of it. They pressure you. You know? Yeah. And then uh, he got in trouble. I don't know if you guys seen his record, you know? Yes. Wilson used his problems with the law as an opportunity to turn his life around. He cut all ties with everybody. And then after that, he started, he started to see difference. Wilson went on to college and graduate school. Freddy believes the dragons weren't ready to let him go. Okay. And what did they say to your brother? They can't just leave it there. We're going to get you, you know? That's it. They're going to get you. Watch your back. The threat was very real because these guys... These guys were not playing around. What do you think happened to your brother? I think maybe he got beat up. So what could have happened? Did your brother see a murder go down? Is there something you and your brother have seen? In the disappearance of 30-year-old Wilson Reyes, Detective Jim Corcoran just learned a violent street game called the Dragons may have harmed Wilson. Did your brother see a murder go down? No, he never told me it's not anything like this that he saw. study and write? Was it in the back? That's all his stuff. All his stuff. All right, yeah. Wilson lives with his parents. Corcoran searches his office and bedroom for any evidence of a threat. Physics. books here that he was reading. Okay. You know? Mother Teresa and Pablo Coelho. Nothing. They seem to be scared to death of these Latin dragons. Eight hours in, two opposing images of Wilson emerge. Former gang member and dedicated scholar. I've never had a case like this before. I'm perplexed by this. We're just trying to come up with a motive behind all this. I don't want this to have a bad ending. information from the family that a long time ago I guess he was involved with this dragon gang they fear that this gang still has a grudge against him 
Corcoran's partner, Detective Celis Morris, heads to Wilson's old west side neighborhood to find out more about the dragons. Right outside of this door, uh -huh. this was probably more than likely tagged by them. Uh -huh. I mean, this is their territory. No other gang is going to come in here. In the bottom, you can see the uh, VR um, dragons. The graffiti marks dragons' turf and warns enemies. And then it's uh, SDK, which probably is uh, Satan, Satan, Disciple Satan, Satan Disciple Killer. MLDK, Maniac Latin Disciple Killer. How bad are they, basically, compared to the other gangs? Are they as bad? Or? I would say they're, they're the same. They've been around since the uh -huh. uh, mid-60s, and, and they're, still, uh, they're still here. In fact, I think we have some on the corner now. Oh, yeah. The family seems to think they've been looking for this guy. Are they known to, like, harbor grudges? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is uh, the only place that they call home, I think. If you hear anything on the street, just let me know, okay, Matthias? Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I'll give you a call if I hear something. All right. All right, 100%. Okay, thank you. There is a possibility that the gang is involved with him missing, but we don't really know at this point. I'm going to be going over to uh, McKinley Park. You know, hopefully he's not laying under some bush, uh, incapacitated. And so. McKinley Park on Chicago's southwest side borders gang territory. It's the last place Wilson was seen three days ago. How deep is this? I'm sure since it's murky, someone goes under, you can lose them real easy. Best case scenario is he's just sick of his family and he's uh, with some friends. Worst case scenario is he's uh, been hanging with the wrong people that may have done harm to him. Um, I just had a question. We were working on a missing case. Morris checks with the fire department. If a body went down in that lagoon, uh, how long would it stay down for? Uh, depending on, on uh, the time of year, uh, right. we give it 24 hours uh, to surface due to uh, you know, the bacteria and the temperature of the water. All right. Well, that's about all I needed, man. Thanks for your time. I all appreciate right, no it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's good news. If Wilson did end up in the lagoon, his body would have surfaced by now. At 6 p.m., they're supposed to be having a news conference with a couple of different news agencies. A lot of times in the past, they've had a detective go. You never know. Might be some people coming in with information. The more leads we get, this case just keeps getting weirder. Somebody's got to know where this guy is. Be strong. We all need to be strong for this. I mean, and I'm still hopeful. I am Wilson's first cousin. Another relative has flown in to help. It's just very unlike Wilson to just disappear without a trace, um, without telling anyone. And he wasn't feeling very well when he went out for a walk. So that's our major concern. In my experience as a detective, I've never worked as with as a concerned a family. They have traveled in from Tucson. They have done fantastic work, but we do need help from the public. So anyone, I mean, at this stage, we're ruling nothing out. Wilson is one of the good guys. Graduated with a master's degree in education and physics. He is one of the good guys. We need to find Wilson. So we're going to go check this out over on Archer. The family's own efforts have turned up a lead to possible evidence of gang violence. Okay, we'll be in touch later. All right. A mechanic at an auto shop two blocks away witnessed an assault. The same day, Wilson disappeared. So what he's saying is the man was just standing in the corner, right? While he was standing in the corner, some guys approached? Uh, the van pulled up. How many guys jumped out of the van? They are kicking. The person is beaten up? Yeah. Were they beating him with their hands or with bats or what? Yeah. 
qué no estaba con la mano lo golpearon? No traía nada más. ¿Es this him? Were they beating him with their hands, with bats, or...? Detective Jim Corcoran questions a man who witnessed an assault by gang members the same day Wilson Reyes disappeared. This him? Thank you very much. Gracias. That's good. We can rule this out. It was before the time he was last seen leaving the house. So this is a good outcome, but we still don't know where he is. Oh, the limp gets worse as it gets later. 26 hours into the first 48, Corcoran responds to a disturbing new lead out of District 9. This guy called today. He said he was riding the L along uh, Western. He looked down from the L. He says he saw a body in the bush. He said he saw it. He thought maybe it was just a bum, okay. a drunk. And until he came home and saw the, the story on the news. So he probably did see a body over there. I said, well, did he look like a, a homeless guy? Just mm -hmm. came. And he said, no, it's just a body. And you said that was from... What do you got, anything good? Yeah, what happened is this guy takes the uh, orange line home every day from work. And today um, he sees from the train now uh, a body somewhere between uh, 35th Street and Western. We're heading over there right now. On my way. The L's orange line runs from Chicago's Loop to Midway Airport, right through Wilson's neighborhood. Okay, yeah, it's right around here where, he, um, where the guy describes seeing the body. It's really dark out here. I don't see anything. out there on foot and maybe get uh, a little closer okay where's the tracks there's a grassy knoll what the f is a grassy knoll still believes that the Latin dragons were involved in his disappearance in some way and that he was the victim of foul play.
percent sure it's his clothes and his family ID the clothes. The next morning, a major yeah. break. Wilson's clothes turn up on a different set of train tracks. Every missing persons detective in the area is called in. The brother found the shoes. He claims those are his shoes. He found a pair of pants uh, that the brother said looks like the pair of pants that he had on when he was last seen. That sweater that's down there, the dark colored sweater, have you ever seen that before? It's a dark gray sweater, exactly the color that he likes. Okay. The stuff is spread out. The shoes were recovered under this blue tarp neatly placed together. They seem to be pretty dry for it to have rain last night. The pants were recovered somewhere down here and are bought up here by a family member. But I just find the whole thing kind of strange. In the morning, Search and I came up here. And then you guys all started searching around here. Okay. It is within about five minutes walk from the house. You know, I guess they would trek the tracks, but, um, you know, you kind of wonder if maybe the guy knew more than he was telling me. You know, I asked him, well, what brought you here? And he said, well, I just got a notion to come over here and look. And lo and behold, he comes over and he finds shoes, pants, a belt, all this stuff that belongs to his brother. I, I think somebody from the past kidnapped him. You know, they're probably jealous of Wilson that he changed his life around. What about this incident that happened 15 years ago that they're so scared about? Yeah, he was a former dragon. The brother says that this seems like an area where somebody would come and dump a body. You know, I thought that that was a little odd for him to say that. You know, it's so hard to get them to tell you the truth when they're looking for missing. You know, he needs to be talked to. And, you know, he needs to tell us, you know, what made him come over here and call us up this morning to say, I found my brother's shoes. Something doesn't add up. It's like, it's too many stories. And I don't know. I don't get this. This is so weird. This whole case is so weird. I mean, it, I ruled nothing out. With only six hours left in the first 48, the conflicting evidence leads detectives to reconsider the family's role in the investigation. You don't know what's in this. He's super intelligent. The family, the whole family is super intelligent. Is there something from the past that... You know well, that's the question. Yeah. We're trying to figure out why is he in such fear of this the family. No one has been specific. No one will come out and be very specific. It's unhelpful. Well, it's all 15 years ago. I mean, who, who knows in this case what's helpful, what isn't helpful. You know, some connected. The clothes that we found today up along those tracks, if you take those tracks north and you're going over the river, Maybe have the uh, marine unit just to do a scan. Yeah. See if, you know, yeah, no, 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 no. it is his cell phone. Uh oh. Okay. What happened? We're going to just. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's found his phone. All right. He's found his phone. Okay. Sergio just finds everything. Araceli says Sergio found more evidence. yards or what? In the area detectives just searched. Okay, just don't touch anything, okay? I like the shit out See, that's the first thing I said. Okay, we just found the cell phone road. Don't touch anything. Oh, I think Sergio already touched Sergio has touched everything. If he's finding more stuff now, after he's been told not to touch something, why would he go ahead and touch it? There's evidence out there. might lead to something else. So I'm looking for confirmation. Can someone can definitively say that was not there earlier? We looked there earlier. That's what I want to definitively say. Thirty-year-old Wilson Reyes has vanished. Detective Jim Corcoran just learned Wilson's brother found his cell phone along a set of train tracks near the family's home. The family keeps finding things. First it's his clothes, now it's his cell phone. They keep 
bringing up uh, stuff about the Latin Dragon Gang, from, but it's all from maybe 15 years ago. Oh, I feel that the family's holding something back. I think they know, they know a little bit more. All right. Sounds... Search find all things. Sergio found everything, huh? This is f***ed up. Okay, guys, I need you all to step back and stop touching things right now. You could be compromising the scene. In the morning, Sergio and I came up here, and I told Sergio, I said, you know what, I'm just very uneasy about not, about not finding the other things. they got to be there somewhere. Sergio found the phone one hour after police scoured the same area. Earlier, they found, I think, pants and a belt and shoes in that literally same location. I'm talking maybe 10 feet away. The family came back after all the police had left and then dug around in the dirt and found a cell phone. We're 95% sure that it was not there during the first search, so now we're taking foul play. technician carefully documents the scene. Maybe I got it like this or like okay. this. But right. the phone didn't open up at any time. It didn't open at all. We're taking his prints right now just for elimination purposes. his mom doing she comes up with his extravagant plans like you know they took his clothing that he's somewhere safe and they just put his clothing here you know. what are you thinking I, I think somebody from the past kidnapped him and tortured him killed him I don't know where they left his body I mean the next logical step would be you find his body somewhere with the discovery of Wilson's belongings and no sign of him in four days, detectives fear the worst. They bring in a dog trained to find dead bodies. Several hundred yards away, the tracks cross a canal. Detectives bring in the marine unit to scan the bottom. Hey Dave, we definitely have a target over here. All right, go ahead, drop it now. Somebody knows something. I mean, we do this every day. Someone's holding something back. When we charged up the phone um, and opened the phone up, there was no SIM card in the phone. 
With only one hour left, a troubling new development stuns detectives. Someone has tampered with Wilson's phone, removing the card that holds text messages and contacts. The uh, call log was deleted off the phone, which is very weird as well. They raised a red flag. So you're thinking we're being all played? Yeah, I think we're being all played. I think we should bring Sergio and Arcelli in to talk about that cell phone. I just think they're not giving us the whole story. I don't know what, you know. Something's not right. Yeah. Give them a call and see if they come in. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having thirsty. Sometimes the only way to get the truth is to ask the hard questions. Push them. I'll go a little heavy, but not, not, uh, yeah. <laughs> not the full monkey, as they say. While Corcoran questions Sergio, Detective Dave Matchell interviews Araceli. You know, the pants, the shoes, the belt, the sweater, the phone was very, very unique. I'm as puzzled as you are. I don't know what the f going on either, but I, I, I'm just thinking someone What would you look and tell me to convince me that? Those clothes were there before you guys went up there. What can you tell me to convince me that those clothes were there before you guys went up there? With only minutes left in the first 48, Detective Dave Matchell presses Wilson Reyes's cousin. He wants to know how the missing man's cell phone turned up in an area detectives already searched. If there's going to be some type of foul play, they're not going to take the time to take the SIM card out. Yes, I know. That sounds strange. It sounds like yeah, it does. I mean, this is cruel, you know? His mom thinks that the Mexican uh, mafia took him and is waiting for the media to come down to get ransom or something to that effect. Yeah. But this we're talking 15 years. I know. 15 but years. They think, they think that people keep grudges for that long. I don't, I've never been in gangs. I don't know what it's like, but, you know, Anything is possible. Not that long. Going back to the clothes. You would swear to God that those clothes were there before you guys went up there. I would not swear to God for anything in this world. Really? Yes. Would you be willing to take a lie detector test? Yes, I would be willing to do that. I want to help you find him, but I want you to tell me what you want me to do. After intense questioning, detectives conclude that neither Sergio nor Araceli are withholding any information. Their stories are tight. 100% legit. My gut is he's not involved. We threw a lot at him, and everything was in line. Okay. He was a lot more forthcoming and honest. They're telling the truth, but we're not really any closer to finding him. Where is this guy? First 48, detectives responded to the disappearance of Wilson Reyes. Search the area where his clothes had been found. Look for Wilson's body in the river. Interviewed his relatives, but they still have not found him. While other detectives grab some sleep, 
Matchwool seeks a fresh angle. Detective Mitchell speaking. Yes, this is Sarah Kelly. Where is Sally? Um, I called because uh, Wilson. Hello, Sarah. Yes, this is Sarah. Surprised and confused that we were all there. Okay. And disoriented. And okay. And he had a clothing that was not his. Did he say anything or what? I mean, like what? Uh... He just was surprised at the way we were reacting. And... Did he say where he was at? No, he didn't say. Where are you at right now? Um, went into the van, and we're parked outside of a uh, place. We got something to eat. We are waiting for you to see what we should do. I want to make sure and get there before he decides to, to walk again. You know, sometimes when the light fires under people, people tend to move in a different way. There it is right there. Hi, how you guys doing? Good. Good? Wilson, how you doing? I'm glad to see you. Five days after he disappeared, Wilson emerges, disheveled and exhausted. Okay. Don't be afraid to talk about anything. Do you remember leaving your home? You need some help. I want to see you do it now. So he's back? He's back. But um, this kid was on the go with school. And then when he finished school, you know, his, he was so used to being on the go, he, his body wasn't letting him unwind. He basically lost it. Does he remember anything? No recollection of where he was. The clothes that he had on were filthy. Do you believe him? I don't know. You taking him to the hospital? Yeah. Detectives returned to the tracks where Wilson's belongings were found. Wilson is safe, but they're still looking for answers. As it went on, you know, from day to day, it's... I was like, felt like banging my head against the wall. When he did leave, uh, possibly his intent was, maybe he was feeling suicidal or whatever. I think just uh, the regular pressures of everyday life got to him. With, uh, he was on the edge. He was on the edge. He, yeah, I mean, yeah. he didn't fall off the edge, but, you know, it's, how well do the family know him? How well does any family know anyone? I mean, when you think this. Truly know somebody. I'd still like to know how his clothes got up here. To me, it, it did seem at the time it was staged, and maybe he staged it himself. We'll never know. No, I don't We'll know. never know what was going through his mind. But hey, thank God, he get the help he needs. He's got a lot of education behind him, so. You know, and it's like we're saying the whole time, he is one of the good ones. Right. I'm just happy that it all worked out.